Good morning. My name is Victoria and you are watching Precious Flex Entertainment TV. It's 4th of March 2022. Let's start with the weather good news. Today weather is 10 degrees that looks nice for the weekend. Moldova asks to join the European Union, a week after Russia invades Ukraine. Today we signed the application for the accession of the Republic of Moldova to the European Union. It is addressed to Emmanuel Macron, President of France, the country that today holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. We will submit the application in the coming days in Brussels, President Maya Sandu said in a statement. The Republic of Moldova must have a clear European path. We are ready to do everything possible to achieve this fundamental national goal, she added. It comes 24 hours after another former Soviet country, Georgia, requested membership of the 27-member bloc. Ukraine, meanwhile, has asked to be rapidly accepted into the Union, but doubts remain over whether all EU countries would back enlargement. Moldova, a small state of 2.6 million people, has been directly impacted by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, with more than 112,000 Ukrainian refugees pouring into the country since Moscow launched the attack on the 24th of February. The maturity of a people is best seen in difficult times. It is seen in temper decisions, in the balance between freedom and responsibility. It is read in the determined calm of the people when a real danger knocks at the door, Sandu said in her statement. The citizens of the Republic of Moldova proved to the world that they are a mature people. We proved it when we did not allow tyranny to settle in our country. We have shown that we will only live by the rules when we defend democracy in elections. And now, in the days of the war in Ukraine, hearing the cannons on the border of Moldova, we remain mature and offer help to our neighbors, who are fleeing the disaster. We remain neutral, but we remain supportive, calm, generous and responsible, she also said. She added that if some decisions need time, others need to be made promptly and decisively, using the opportunities offered by the changing landscape of the world. We must act immediately when circumstances require and we see clearly the opportunity to ensure a safer, better life for future generations. Achieving this goal is our duty to the citizens. Ukrainians, ravaged by a terrible war, have ended up in a veritable hell on earth. Suddenly the country has a million refugees who seek refuge in neighborhood countries such as Poland, Moldova, Slovakia and Romania. The images go to the bone, children who have to say goodbye to their father, who has to stay behind to fight for his country. Sobbing mothers unsure if they will ever see their grown sons again. On social media, under the hashtag pound sign African sign green, you will come across images of fleeing people from Ukraine who are refused entry on the train to, for example, Poland. Striking detail, these people are all of color, such as people from Senegal or India who studied or worked in Ukraine. A black man who was filming emphasized that as black people, they were not allowed to take the train. In such a crisis, everyone is trying to save their own skin. Apparently the rule here is, own people first. A CBS News reporter confirms the ranking of refugees by color and origin as follows, with all due respect, this is not Iraq or Afghanistan, this is a civilized society that you would not expect. In short, you would expect this from the barbarians in Iraq and Afghanistan. In times of war you should not use the word racism, because this is not the time. Human lives are at stake and everything else disappears for a while. But in a civilized society we should be able to talk about racism and discrimination, even if that society is involved in a war. Because how on earth is it possible that people are opposed by their color or origin if they want to flee a war zone? Ukraine, in the eyes of the West, falls under the civilized part of the world. Refugees from there are more welcome than those from Afghanistan and Syria. I also feel that mercy around me. Of course we have seen the war in Syria happen, but this is different, I hear and notice. Not only because it is so close this time, 
but also because we recognize ourselves in these people. But all refugees matter, regardless of color or origin. Especially in times of war we must not lose sight of our humanity. This whole situation is bad enough. Prime Minister Rutt addresses the Ukrainian people in a video message, at the request of Ukrainian President Zelensky. Rutt says that the Netherlands supports and admires the country. That is the news update. I will leave you now to watch the video message of the Dutch Prime Minister. Was the result of the second overleg between the countries yesterday? Nog altijd vallen er onder de Oekraïnse burgerbevolking veel slachtoffers. Door de humanitaire corridors zouden mensen veilig moeten kunnen vertrekken. Maar hoe en wanneer die er komen is nog onduidelijk. De corridors lijken tot nu toe het enige onderdeel waarover overeenstemming is bereikt. De landen gaan nog een derde keer met elkaar praten. Als voorwaarde voor de gesprekken had president Zelensky een einde aan het geweld geëist. Maar Rusland blijft aanvallen. Daarnaast wil de Oekraïnse regering een onmiddellijk staakt het vuren en terugtrekking van Russische troepen. Rusland wil dat Oekraïne wordt gedemilitariseerd en dat onder meer de inlijving van de Krim wordt erkend. Premier Rutte heeft de Oekraïners een hart onder de riem gestoken. Op verzoek van president Zelensky maakte hij een videoboodschap. People of Ukraine, in these dark hours of Ukraine's history, I speak to you as Prime Minister of the Netherlands. To tell you that our hearts are with you. That we admire the courage and bravery of both Ukrainian military personnel and civilians in countering Russian aggression. That we admire President Zelensky. And to say that we, your friends in the Netherlands, support you. We are family in Europe. We stand with you. Slava Ukraini.